And let's go ahead and introduce the players for it and take it away. All right. Here in the top left, we have Demaga. Dimitrio Flipchuk from Team MTW against the red Protoss in the bottom right. Tyler Wasileski. Uh, Noni from Team Liquid. Noni is very storied in his brood work career as the best foreigner and now has a huge reputation to really uphold and I think whether or not you can agree or disagree with you know with the way he's been playing game number two was a very solid style that I think was really good because Noni at one point didn't feel like he was taking a huge amount of risks um, the only th and like he was able to really adapt he used the non thermal lance colossus push and especially because he's using that knowledge of the fact that Demaga goes for a lot of Zerglings, just like you were saying, Andre. I liked it a lot. At the same time, Demaga's style is so cool to watch too. Ling Bane with the good upgrades is something, if executed well, looks so pretty. Especially if you're uh, dropping the, uh, the army while dropping his mineral line. Those plus two Banelings one-shot workers. Mm -hmm. Lots of potential. And Demaga has shown on this map that he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. <laughs> yeah. So. Hey, I was just thinking. <coughs> what if Demaga does the same style, but you scout out and you know your opponent is going Colossus, and then you incorporate Queens with that attack to snipe out the Colossus? As anti-air, since it doesn't have yeah. Thermal Lance. Yeah. Because the Queens so have So now a they have range. seven range. They have seven range, so they... They, they outrange, outrange the Colossus. Colossi. <laughs> How sick would that Pretty be? Pretty dope. Because think, they have to Mass split up all over the place. Big. The Colossus are going to be kiting around, and the Queens are going to be attacking the whole time. That's true. I and then you spread creep that way much easier to deal with it. So that way you're Well, he was on creep, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You spread creep more easily to empower him. Oh and then God. you drop like 15 hatcheries around the map to have queens come in for flanks. We just broke <laughs> We just broke Starcraft, man. No, we I'm just, just broke I'm just it. Kidding. I was just trolling. No, that, that is what you just said is absolutely <laughs> true. Queens coming from the flank with Zerg. Well, because <laughs> the big thing is reinforcement points. More and Zergs have been realizing reinforcement points are really important because it's like setting up the flank. Correct. So you can even, if you manage your lava really well, as you can see right now, Noni getting a good scout of his opponent's base, sees everything gas and hatchery and full. But if you can manage your lava really well, only make drones from like your main, and then you force all your larva to stock up at certain reinforcement points, you can set up a flank that way without having to worry too much about the, the preparation. And as a result, you're able to get really good. This is something that Stefano does perfectly all the time. As you can see, why does he always seem to get just the amount of macro up? Just because he's able to really control every single small thing. And uh, hopefully we can see something like that. But, ooh, 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 ooh. What Changing do we see out of Noni? We see a Stargate be instead of a second gateway. Interesting. Huh. Interesting. Now, it is already three queens out here, but obviously this Stargate uh, has a lot of potential. I would love this Stargate to actually be made over here in the fourth location, but I think uh, Noni is just saying, okay, I'm going to play it a little bit more conservative, because that's definitely an area where you can easily get scouted with the Zerglings roaming the map. Damaga has an Overlord stationed over here, just checking for the expansion. Now, it should get around the time where he's wondering where the heck is this base. It should be up by now. We're already yeah. almost six minutes into it. You might it. think that Noni's one basing. Correct. That's exactly what he's reading at this point. It's exactly what he should read. So, I would actually say Demaga should go for... Yeah, he's making spines. <laughs> look at that. Uh, but another queen as well. Make four queens, man. No problem. Four queens. Get some Seriously, you can hold... With slow lings, queens, and spines, yes. you can hold off easily one base pushes. Very uh, easily. Yeah, very easily. And you can see that Demaga being very safe. First Void Ray out onto the field for Noni, a second one in production. Not going to follow it up with Phoenixes. I like that choice. As, I mean, Noni, if you're going to commit to aggression, again, committing to it. Finally placing the expansion down now. Demaga did see it with his overlords. Like, okay, a really delayed Nexus. So he does have units out. Ooh. I still have to be careful. Look, he thinks it's Dark Templars as well. Is he placing a spore? Oh, yeah. Put a he spore has a down. Spore. That will inevitably <laughs> actually help him out so much against this Void Reef pressure. Yeah. Maybe he actually doesn't even need it. He's going to go up to like five queens. Yeah. Just spread creep all over the map and completely dominate his opponent or try to dominate his opponent as soon as this Oof. this is shown. Man, that is a lot of damage from the, from, uh, the, the queens. And you can see 
that immediately Noni is, is forced to be pressured off. Now, there's interesting things you can do with Void Rays. You can use it to kind of act like Hellions in a way, deny creep tumors. Yep. Um, there's been some variants. You know, I remember Hero used to do that a lot, get an Observer with an Avoid Ray, similar to how people use Raven and Banshee and TVZ to try to, deny, to, not, to deny creep tumors. But Noni is going to use his Void Rays to kind of peruse the map and really take control of it. What's interesting is to see what Noni follows up from here because he doesn't have a lot of tech outside the Stargate. He doesn't have a Robo, doesn't necessarily have, you know, Twilight Council or anything, not even a Forge for upgrades. And Demog already has his double Evo Chamber. So this is something that I'm w I'm just sitting back and ready to see what Noni's ready to show us. Obviously, I mean, he has a lot of surprise attack potential in this with the Phoenixes just gathering up over here. He is Chrono Boosting him out, so it mm. shows you. He is really invested into the surprise, and he needs to kill a ton of queens if he wants this to be effective. I would actually say he might even need to kill all of the queens if he wants this to be effective. That would be very, it would be ideal. Yeah. No queens would be really good, especially because the main isn't protected as well as the natural with that Spore Caller. That Spore Caller zones off more than you think it does. As you can see, Noni has two Void Rays going to the main. You can see Demaga immediately pulling a second queen also for inject, so pretty good timing from Demaga in that regards. Noni immediately trying to uh, kill off another drone, and while still chrono boosting out these Phoenixes, just like you were saying, at the same time, Demaga has Zerglings in position, and he's getting these really good upgrades, getting a s uh, Spire, wow. So he really wants to get the Spires out to really deal with those air units. As a result, Noni immediately getting his robotics facility and his plus one weapon. So Noni spending a lot of his gas on his tech. As you can see, he doesn't have much ground army right now back at home. By the way, I did want to mention that that Zergling was able to see the Phoenixes run across. And now it's three queens. That's why the Spore Caller goes down. But they're all going to get picked up. Beautiful. Demaga is going to lose these three queens. The fourth and fifth queen are going to get over here. But it's not going to be enough time, I don't think. Again, they get picked up. Another rallying. Um, Phoenix gets in here, but he's going to back up. Oh, keeps, mm, very keeps the, tight. Uh, the Void Ray alive. Yeah. And look at that. He will be able to hold. Um, that's actually pretty good. He took yeah, out two queens. Pretty impressive. And now Demar can't even keep full injects going on, making three queens at a time, 17 drones. Oh, man. Demaga is so confident in his ability to hold off these queens. And you can see that uh, spores are everywhere. As no matter what Demaga or D Noni does, Maga is really confident in just get setting up his mid game. Look at just picking up these drone counts and really harassing. Noni was known back in the early days, days of StarCraft 2 for utilizing Phoenixes very handily. Nonetheless, you can see that he, he's still powering up, getting a couple more gateways, getting his robotic bay. And again, Noni's still teching really hard back at home. He's going for this push again. Yeah. This is going up to six gateways and, of course, Colossus. Now, remember, those Phoenixes are so expensive. 150 minerals, 100 gas. You can look at that as a Zealot and a Sentry every time you look at one Phoenix. The count is up to six. That's why Demaga has made the call to only make drones from here. And now that, you know, that period is over, obviously mm. all the income that Anoni is getting right now should go to units. He's now decided to make um, additional circlings. Yeah, Noni did probe up to a decent count to 50, and he did go for a mass tech as well. Now, utilizing that observer with the void rays, like we were pointing out, um, to really deny the creep, very key mid game, especially if he, Noni wants to follow it with a Colossus push. Denying this creep tumor will be invaluable. Oh, wow, look at him pulling stalkers, see if he can pick off some of the queens. And a uh, very cute play here from Noni. Uh -oh. Now, he has the controls very well. It's actually very difficult. You'd be surprised. Noni really wants to force the Queens off the creep before he can re-engage. But immediately just backing off, knowing that his third is the most valuable thing. He loses his army, he loses his third. And for now, look at this. Noni is, has a pretty good number of tech out at this point, and I don't think uh, Demaga can kill him at all. Nine Corruptors are, out, are coming out in the field right now. Eleven, excuse me. So it looks to just contest all of air control. The big problem I have with Demaga uh, at this point is the fact that his opponent has just so much air control that the Colossus might be able to burst down all the Zerglings in time uh, so mm. that obviously he has no army as soon as you know the Colossus actually get cleaned up. Uh, Demaga really needs to focus on getting rid of those Colossus as the number one priority with these Corruptors. He needs yeah. to do it in order to actually keep him you know, alive in this. 
Yeah, you're right. It's gonna be difficult though, because the Phoenixes and Void Rays can really distract them from being able to do anything. Oh, Corrupt is trying to see if he can catch the Void Rays. Now, Noni's been doing a good job keeping them alive. He might, uh... Oh, no. Oh, no. He turned around for just a oh. second. I was gonna say, he might use his gateway arm to try to see if he can intercept and dissuade the rest of the units from really pursuing the Corruptors, trying to land the last hit, and they do. Now, Noni doesn't have Blink, and it's gonna have a direct engagement. Demaga intent on taking out the Colossus, Beautiful. but there are a lot of uh, Protoss units here, oh, and he's just going to snipe man. it and immediately run. Now, the Queen's got really far off creep, and Noni would be very uh, well encouraged to take the Queen's out, ensuring that uh, creep spread and, in and injects will be limited. At this point, Noni does have a pretty sizable ground army, and a lot of his army is in supply because he doesn't have that many worker count. Noni's going to engage here directly. The Zerglings can't really do much as there is no surface area, and all of a sudden, Noni has a pretty decent position as long as he can keep his units alive. Attacking right there is probably the best thing that Zergs can do, even though the supplies are in revenge for Noni, and he, yes, he's getting another Colossus out. That helps out so much because it burns so many Force Heals, um, and, and it makes it in a position where you can't do this, you know, you can't wall off and, and take just the most amazing position and then kill some drones. Right now, it just works that Noni has to be cost efficient with these attacks uh, in order for him to get an advantage. Whereas if you're attacking your opponent, you can get an advantage in both killing drones and being cost efficient. Well, it's just it's just so cool because Noni's been able to keep his probe count so high and Damaga hasn't been able to drone as much. He's droning in huge ways, 17 drones, 12 drones. But Noni's the one that's been able to keep a steady production up. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that Noni's in a bad position whatsoever. From this point, we've seen him turtle in PBZ. And Demaga, you know, he has been going for this Mad Zergling style, but hasn't really been able to put on that form of aggression we normally see where he's dropping at different places and able to really shut down Protoss pushes. Uh, for now, Demaga getting his Greater Spire, rushing really quickly to that tech. And, I mean, Demaga doesn't have that great drone saturation. In fact, he doesn't have his fourth base yet. And this is pretty late for a fourth base in ZVP. I would agree so. And going for that hive tech is pretty hard as well. I mean, when you do this, you basically say, I'm not going to go Infestors. And that's a really, really hard sacrifice to make as Infestor Brute Lords are, <laughs> you know, that's the main staple of Zerg Endgame. You need that. Look at the supplies. Noni is going to gear up for this push pretty soon here. Yeah, Units with have plus shown three. three Colossus and two Archons. Wow, that is so scary to look at when you are yeah. going a Zergling <laughs> style. <laughs> yeah, Zerglings do just absolutely melt in the face of Colossi and Archons. Now, the one thing that's going to be a saving grace for Demaga will be creep spread if he can get really good positioning. And uh, as long as he can keep his Brutalors alive. Now, interesting thing is Demaga has skimped out on Infestors. Uh, now, normally Infestors are really important on dealing with the pro Protoss ball, especially limiting uh, how far Colossi can really move out and the Stalkers have to rearrange accordingly. Demaga has none of that. In fact, Demaga doesn't have much at all. Oh my goodness, Demaga cancels his fourth base because he thinks Protoss is going to push. This is looking really good for Noni at this point. I think actually that should have stayed up just to give him a little bit more time. I think Noni would have gone to this fourth base first. And oh yeah, God. he goes up there, but no, he's just going to evacuate a, a, a little bit. I think that just forces Noni to just reposition a little bit. Mm. Uh, maybe he actually does the same thing. But as you can see, Demaga has a ton of Broodlords coming out here. Noni <laughs> was not able to pull the trigger in time. And these Broodlords, let me tell you, they will be the main reason, if anything, for uh, for Noni, excuse it's me, for Demaga to win this fight. I, I don't know, though, because he doesn't have Infestors, and Noni, just nothing stopping him from blinking underneath, except for the Zergs and Banelings. As long as he can do this correctly, you can see great micro control really hugging the left side, immediately dealing with the Colossus are going to town. The Corruptors are trying to nail the rest. The Zergs are trying to engage right now, but it might be a little bit too late. The Brewers are also down for the count. Noni does lose a lot of his Colossus, and a lot of AoE with that drops and you can see at the end, Noni does manage to have some units. The reinforcements, though, should be able to crush it in a fantastic hole, just like you were saying, Andre, as the, the spine crawler is doing a fantastic amount of DPS, killing off three, four stalkers apiece. Noni now resets his supply, doesn't have that much army back at home. And uh, you can see Demaga, his upgrades 3 2 against 3 1, really starting to pay off dividends. And you might think that was still really good for Noni because he can get this fourth base, and obviously it puts. Demaga only on three base, but the fact of the matter is the upgrade advantage goes to Demaga with his 3-2 currently against the 3-0 that Noni has, or 3-1 rather. Uh, 
it might be small, but Zergling, Baneling, or in general, just Zerglings are a lot better after huge trades. That mobility helps out because you have the ability to obviously put pressure on your opponent. And look, there's no blink, there's no charge. Noni is in a really You're tough right. position. And oh my god, the mm. Banelings! They're exploding all over those uh, those Zealots. And it looks like Colossus will go down as well. Noni just falling apart here, just too much pressure. And he's going to lose his fourth base. I, I can't believe he doesn't have Blink. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Noni at this point, if he had Blink, I thought he had Blink for the for the fight against Broodlord. No, but he yeah. didn't have it. Yeah, I thought he had it the entire time. I was wondering why he wasn't. And that's why I was like, wow, he's going to stutter step as Marco. I haven't seen this against Broodlord before. But as a result, Noni loses his fourth base to Maga, able to get up his fourth. Now, there's no secret that both players are starting to run dry on resources. Um, as right now, Demaga has full control of the map. Noni kind of has to reset everything yet again. Now trying to move to the left-hand si side. But, wow, I mean, Noni is really not able to pull off against the onslaught of Zerglings. Look at a full surround. And with that, Noni's going to lose the rest of his army. Demaga pushes in to see if he can take this third base. If he takes his third base in the name of Zerg, it's going to be lights out for Noni as he will have almost no economy to rebuild anything whatsoever. And look at that, Pope's trying to escape, but Zerglings are absolutely wrecking whatever is left of the Protoss base. This is not looking good whatsoever. Noni down to just 44 supply, and Noni, I think, realizes at this point he can't do much warping his themselves in Archon's back at home, but it's not going to do much against the huge onslaught of Zerg army. That's so unfortunate. Noni, I mean, played such a great game. He that did. one push, Played. it looked... It looked almost unstoppable for it, and I thought for sure he was going to win there. I think if he attacked actually a couple minutes earlier, he would have won straight up. I mean, I don't think Broodlords would have been there in time. It, they would have been morphing, if anything, and the Stalkers could have obviously done something about mm. it. Broodlords are out again. He has no answer for this. And yeah. Lights out. Demaga is going to push in here with Broodlords, and with that, Demaga doesn't really have anything to fear. Noni doesn't have any real form of anti-air to answer. His Archons can't even get there. GG. Demaga takes game number three against Noni after a very contested game. Very scary moments for both players. But in the end, Demaga moves up to 4-3 and three in his division. A much needed win to potentially threaten a wild card's guaranteed spot. Very nice play. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with Noni, and especially with yeah. all the things that's going on with him currently. I know he's looking for a house out in California, yeah. and just things are, things are uh, you know, I think he's not around. even fully moved in yet, and the fact that he's able to still play a pretty close series. Yeah, yeah. that's really impressive. impressive. So, Noni, uh, I mean, there's no shame in, in losing to Damaga. He really played well in that game number three. Mm -hmm. and I think hats off goes to him. But Damaga, he's the victor today. And he's the one that's getting the 150 bucks and moving up in the ranks for the North American Star League group stages.